Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to bring you Stringer the Lilac Rat. Uh, and that is a new rat that I have made and will be up to grabs in my Etsy shop. So stay tuned. So I did lose a little bit of footage of painting the eyes and stuff, um, but I think you get the idea of how I did it. Um, so I'm just going around and painting uh, the nose and around the eyes in a nice pink color. Um, and uh, the brand is uh, Dervian Matisse and it is in ash pink and it's a series 2. Uh, I know the series mean um, sometimes they're a bit priced differently just because they have been made a little bit differently from the cheaper ones. Uh, this is a made in Australia brand so I don't know how common it is over in the states or anything but you can get it pretty much um, at any local art store here in Australia. I got mine from Melbourne Art Supplies in a um, city in Melbourne. And the paint that I use for the eyeballs is this nice black, uh, pure black paint by Chromacryl. Uh, I did get a large pot because I go through quite a lot of it. And it is also from Melbourne Art Supplies in the city. And this is like my go-to black paint. I like the texture, the color, the consistency, the way it dries. I just like everything about it. And it is Australian made. So um, it's great to always support Australian made stuff too, if you're in Australia. So here are the two paints that I've been using for the painting this rat. And I originally was going to do uh, a whole black around the eyes, but then I changed my mind and I wanted to do pink because I like rats with little pink noses and ears. So I went with pink instead. So painting up the ears now uh, in the same pink color. And as normal, uh, when I create a doll, I usually have a backstory for them. So I'll go through the backstory now. Lilac rats are sweet little critters. They tend to offer little lilac flowers to anyone they meet as a token of goodwill and friendship. They live in a large family group of around 100 to 200 rats. Each rat has equal hierarchy, responsibility and will care for the young of the mischief. Because the rats live in a lilac plant, their furs turn purple in colour to blend into their surroundings. These critters have a sweet scent of lilac from rubbing against the flowers. Lilac rats are found on the mainland Nankalandara in the region of Alpine Ridge from Clearview to Watchman's Cape. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed that little story there. Moving on to the faux fur and I'm using this particular faux fur because I only had a little bit of it left and I really really like it and the rat is the uh, smallest doll that I've made so it's perfect for little off cuts or little tiny bits of fur that you have left uh, so I only had a little bit left so perfect. And it is sort of a medium pile length, but it is really, really good quality faux fur. I can't remember where I got it from, um, but I've had it sitting around for a little while. So only because I've had a little bit left. So I thought this was a perfect little uh, creature to make. And as you can see, I've drawn on the body parts. So I'm going to be cutting around all of the markings that I've made with a sharp, small sized a pair of scissors and that way you can get the blades uh, in between the uh, fur pile and um, cut away and you won't actually cut the pile of the fur because that ends up kind of making it a bit useless to use. So once I have cut all the pieces out I'll then pin it together uh, the first side together uh, and then I will move on to uh, the sewing machine which I prefer to use a sewing machine because I find it a lot stronger. So I tend to just uh, sew around the front of the rat leaving the neck hole opened and uh, mainly the legs open as well unless you have a wide uh, sized leg um, which you can then flip the fur inside out but um, for something this small you will need to leave it open so you can properly flip it out and then you'll have to hand sew it together once you've put everything um, together inside the faux fur. And I also leave the back end opened as well just so I can properly flip it inside out and I can insert any armature pieces in um, and I won't have any problem um, doing that. So my sewing machine is, it's, it's not the most expensive sewing machine and it's not the cheapest. It's a brother. Uh, it is uh, pretty old now so I'll probably need to update it because it seems to have a, a hard time uh, dealing with sewing faux fur, especially when it's quite thick. It tends to um, have a little freak out with the needle, it doesn't want to go through. Um, so I'll probably need to find a more heavy duty one um, eventually but for now this is working fine. I can work around that. I'll just have to um, I usually go really slowly just so it doesn't overload the motor or anything. Um, but it does take a bit longer, but you know, you've got to care for your appliances and stuff. 
So I'd also recommend using a high quality thread as well because um, you know cheap thread is cheap for a reason. It's cheap and nasty and tends to break a lot. Um, so you really want to use something that's good quality. I use Gutmann um, thread so that's probably one of the best quality threads you can get and I haven't had a problem with it in a sewing machine. Sometimes I do snap it when I'm hand sewing just because I'm pretty rough with it um, but you want something that will be able to hold your uh, fur pieces together and it won't risk um, snapping anything. So that's uh, sewn up and once that is done you can flip everything inside out and you can comb out all of the little faux fur pile pieces that have been sewn down. Uh, I just use like a little pick tool to, to pull them out um, and that works a treat. So just a little recap of what armatures I use. I do have a separate video on this if you're interested. It's on my channel. Uh, it's a Material 101 playlist. And so this is the armature that I'm using for this particular rat because it is a smaller doll. It's a three millimeter thick um, uh, aluminium, galvanized aluminium uh, armature wire. And um, I don't know inches because I'm not American, I'm Australian, I use millimeters. So um, just use a converter if you don't know what three millimeter thick is. Uh, and it will convert it to inches for you but I get this locally from a craft store called Riot um, I'm kind of moving away from using this armature just because I find that a plastic ball and socket armature is much better it's just um, does have some restrictions but as you can see I only have this particular size and a larger size and a really large size but that's for um, dragons in the future but uh, I don't have a size that will fit this particular rat that will hold the weight of the resin pieces so I'll have to look into that when I'm ready but um, for the smaller dolls for now I will use this um, armature. So for the little ratty tail I'm using some faux suede and it is a sort of moccasin faux suede I guess it's got like this little um, fluffy on the back of it so which it can be good and bad um, if you you know need something that's a bit thicker but what I tend to do when I do um, little tails is I actually cut the fluffy off uh, and maybe just leave a little strip just so it fills out the tail a, a little bit but I find if you cut the edges off the fluffy um, edges it will um, adhere a little bit better to and hide the seam a little bit better I mean you can't really hide a seam with this so um, but it just makes it a bit neater and a bit flatter so here's what the tail looks like and as you can see it does have some seams I decided to glue the tail for this one instead of sewing it um, just because I know sewing gives a little bit of tug lines and can um, open up so I went with gluing it down just so it um, just holds together a bit a bit a bit better and it won't risk from popping open or anything or have any little like thread pull marks or anything like that or risks splitting it or anything so yeah I went for gluing with this one so after everything's sewn up and put together, I'll then fur the face and again, like I said, furring is something that I've developed over many, many years and I'm not really willing to share it right now. I may in the future, just not right now. Um, so uh, here's what we have so far. Now I do do a little bit of shading depending on the colour of the little critter. Uh, for this little one, I have um, put two little black dots above the eyes. I don't know why, I just thought it needed it and I'm glad I did um, but yeah and then you can add any little details like whiskers and stuff so um, and then you've and then you finished so this little one uh, went up in my Etsy shop I don't know if she has sold yet if she's not uh, the link is in the description to my shop and I will be changing shops to my own personal shop but more about that in another video I just stay tuned so that's it for me today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any requests you can leave them in the comments down below you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at creatures of net and I'll catch you in the next one bye